Hey guys, um, today we're just going to be talking about some uh, various things that I might have mentioned but not really gone into detail about, um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about them today. The first thing are comments, which I mentioned briefly um, a little while ago, but there's one more thing that I want to tell you about them, because commenting can be very important. Um, so like I said before, you can preface commented lines with this, uh, these two slashes, and then anything on that line will be ignored by the compiler. So you can just continue with your code on the next line. Um, but if you want to write a comment that spans multiple lines, the way you do that is, instead of using these two slashes, you do a, um, slash asterisk. And then you can type whatever you want, wherever you want, for as many lines as you want. You know, however long you want it to be. And then you end your block comment with uh, asterisk slash. And then all of this will get ignored by the compiler when you compile. So um, let's check that out. Um... So if this works, we should expect no compile errors, and uh, when you run it, it should just say hello world. There we go, hello world. So quick look at block comments. They can be useful, and I'm sure you'll find um, some instance where you'll uh, like to use them. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about are a, a type of function that I forgot to mention before, which um, is one that doesn't have a return type. Um, so, like, usually we would declare a function, like when we did find zero, or whatever, and it would return some type of value, like an integer, but if we want to make a function that doesn't return anything, um, that may be void, um, say, hello, or something, then we declare it with, uh, with this void in front. That means that it's not gonna have a return type, it's, uh, it's not going to return anything, it just does some random commands. So maybe this says hello. And then down in main, we can call say hello. And it should, uh, it's going to go here and then jump over here and then say hello. And it's not going to expect any kind of return value. So yeah, there you go. Um, another thing that I'm going to talk about is variable scope which is really important, and I've only sort of mentioned it. Um, so when you have functions, separate functions like main, and then whatever else you might create, um, the variables between those functions do not, they're not like the same. They don't share something called scope. So if I make an integer in main and call it a, or something very obvious like that, and then I make a function, um, I don't know, I'll just make something up. Let's say what this is going to do, this function a, which I just, I should probably call this just function. Um, if this has an integer called a, which say equals 10, and this integer down in main equals 2, and in this function we see out a, um, as you might expect, it's not going to see out this A, even if we call it in main. It's going to see out this A, because um, this uh, variable here in main does not exist in this function. The only variables, the way that you cross variables into functions is you have them as arguments. So if I passed in some, some integer here, and then I would pass in uh, it in main, and they would actually get copied into that function, and then it would exist in that scope. But just having variables like this, um, as you can see, it'll say uh, 10 instead of 2, because uh, it uses its local scope um, when, when you're addressing those variables. Uh, one other thing about scope is that you can have global scope, which is outside of any functions. So if we have an integer 
um, n equals 100. And then in our function, Um, in our function, we output n, and then in main, um, hopefully this should uh, say the same thing a couple times. So, in function, n is 100, and in main, n is still 100. So, um, both of these functions can access this variable because it's global. It has global scope, which means that it's not... Uh, specific to one function. So global variables are generally um, kind of looked down upon because they can be kind of tricky because um, sometimes having your variables lo or global makes it less obvious when that variable could be modified. So if maybe in this function I accidentally end up typing n++ or something uh, and then I'm expecting n to be 10, but then n is 101, and it's really hard to figure out where this kind of discrepancy could have happened, where n got incremented, because I don't remember typing that out if this happened in some obscure function. So global variables kind of try to stray away from them and keep your variables uh, with local scope within their own kind of functions. And that way, it'll make it easier to keep track of your variables and um, everything that happens to them. So that's a look at scope. One other thing, I have a couple more things to talk about. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about random numbers because they're really important to games. And uh, they can be important elsewhere, too. So the first thing, if you're going to use random numbers, um, you need to include the C time library. And I'll tell you why in just a second. When computers generate random numbers, they're not really random. They're based on a seed number. Um, so when we're generating random numbers, we have to seed our random number generator with a specific number. And uh, the tricky thing is if we seed our random number generator with um, a constant like 5. Oh, by the way, you seed your random number generator with this srand function. Uh, you seed rand, so you put as an argument the seed for your uh, generator. So if we seed it with a constant variable or a constant value like five, and then um, we generate some random entries. So let's say r equals rand. This is how you generate a random number, and then um, to get it to have a range, say we want numbers up to a hundred, um, you use the mod operator. So rand mod 100 is going to give you uh, random numbers between 0 and 99. Um, and you seeded the random number generator with the number 5. So then if we see out um, that number, you'll see that when we run this, um, we're going to get the same number every time. And that's because uh, we seeded the random number, gener random number generator with a constant number. So... To get around this, we're going to use a function that's in the C time library, which is time, and then the argument is null. Um, and what this is going to do is this returns the current time in seconds. So it's going to uh, seed the random number generator with the current uh, time in seconds. So now you'll see um, that when we recompile this and then run, uh, we get 25, and then we get 46, and then we could get 60. So you'll see it's actually looking more random now. And um, the thing about this is uh, this value changes every second. So if you um, run this, you know, multiple times in one second, you're not going to get different numbers. So hopefully your program lasts um, more than one, one second which most do, so usually you don't have to worry about that. Um, so that's how we'll be generating random numbers. 